podcast at 4 o'clock in the morning. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I wanted to apologize for the last episode. This is episode 308. 308? Yes. 308 episodes. Last episode, 307, I did the blind tasting. I want to apologize. I was putting the uh, wines up to the camera and I realized it was pretty bright outside because the window is right behind the camera. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, big window. Like, there's three big windows here. And it, it the light you know, shine so brightly that you couldn't see the label. So apologize about that, but at least you were able to read the captions underneath. I'm getting a little irritated. My camera seems a little bit crooked, but that's okay. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Seems all right. At least good enough. <clears throat> so next time when the sun's shining really brightly, I'm gonna back the table back a little bit further so that the light doesn't affect the labels. But anyway, thanks for bearing with me on this a new setting. Um, if you want to make a comment, tell me what you think about this setting. I know, uh, I think it was uh, Mike Burns, he told me that he really liked this new setting that I have. I like it too. I like this arrangement. A little bit of echo. I'm going to work on that a little bit. Try to find something to absorb the sound in this room because it's fairly high ceilings up, up behind me. Let's see, uh, upcoming, uh, we're going to... Uh, down to Seattle to help celebrate the 50th anniversary of Chateau St. Michel. Kind of exciting then. I used to have this kind of bad feeling about St. Michel. And then uh, when I interviewed, um, no, um, excuse me, Bill Powers <laughs> uh, from Powers uh, Winery, uh, Badger Mountain, that area. And he really, really helped me to appreciate how much Chateau St. Michel helps other wineries uh, you know, in their effort to uh, promote Washington wines. So I really came away with a greater appreciation of this winery, and they do an awesome job. We had an event with them up here in the San Juan Islands uh, last year, and it was very successful. They make some great wines, and so a lot of the great Washington winemakers have come out of uh, St. Michelle Winery. So, um, yeah, big ups to them, 50th anniversary down at Space Needle in Seattle. We're going to go down to that and have some fun down there. Going down to a tasting uh, tomorrow, or Monday, actually, for American Northwest Distributors. Kind of get f more familiar with their portfolio. <clears throat> so excited about that, upcoming things that are happening. This is like my worst time for me as far as sports go. I'm not really big into the NBA. I do watch it occasionally. But um, next month is March Madness, college basketball playoffs. Always excited about that. See, I'm getting hooked up on this whole, it seems a little bit off kilter. But anyway, it's okay. I don't want to draw attention to it. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> Silly me. Anyway, we're, what we're doing today is we're going to look at uh, three Bordeaux-style wines from the New World. And we say Bordeaux because they include Cab, Merlot, Cab Franc, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and those are the five grapes of Bordeaux. Let's see. Let's see and make sure I got them. Cab, Merlot, Cab Franc, Petit Bordeaux, Malbec. They're starting to bring Malbec back into Bordeaux. Originally, it didn't. It was starting to... Uh, they, they pulled up the vines. I can't talk today for some reason. I don't understand that. Anyway, um, in Bordeaux, they actually have to stick to those five varietals. They can't wander off and do other things. Whereas in the New World... They can put a little twist on these Bordeaux blends. Always kid, a Washington State Bordeaux blend it usually includes Syrah. Well, two of these wines that we have in today that we're going to taste do have a little bit of twist. They have something different in them. I, I have the spec sheet here because I couldn't. It's not written on the label. You know how much I hate that. Please put the blend on the label. I think as a consumer... Do you want to see that? I think I've gotten some, uh, most of the comments have been positive and saying, yes, I want to see what the blends are. How do you feel? Maybe we can add to that down below. Give me some ammunition for these wineries to at least, they don't have to put percentages necessarily, but just what grapes are in there would be fine with me. Instead of having to go to the computer, look it up. How many consumers actually do that? I mean, really, do you want to take the time to do that? You just want to drink your wine. But it is very interesting to see that on the back of the label. 
So just a, a shout out to the wineries. Please think about that when you're making your wines. Put the, the grapes on the label, please, please. Okay, we're gonna get started right off. This is the uh, 2014 Faithful Hound South African Red from Malderbosch, South Africa. And this is a blend of, I got right here, I had to look it up, uh, 32 cab front, 26 cab, 19% Merlot, 16% Malbec, 7% Petit Verdot. One, two, three. They went for all five of the grapes of Bordeaux. Um, in the new world, you can veer off. In the old world, you can't. Now, that being said, in Italy, the Mavericks started wanting to put Cab and Merlot with their Sangiovese, so they couldn't call it Chianti. They came up with the word Super Tuscan. In other words, these Tuscan wines. Now they're allowing a little bit of these other varietals to be included in the Chianti classical region. So it would be interesting to see how that develops. But in France, in Bordeaux, they do not give in. It has to be those five grapes. So, this has all five grapes of Bordeaux. There used to be six grapes of Bordeaux. I'm not even going to answer that. If you're watching this video, make the comment, do you know what the sixth grape of Bordeaux was? They don't no longer plant it there. Okay, so this is from South Africa. Uh, South Africa is considered New World, believe it or not. They've been making wine for a long, long time but it's still in the new world category. So let's see what we get on the nose. Oh, by the way, $25. I think you can get it for less, but that's a suggested retail price. And because these were sent to me in the mail, I did not, I was not able to look at in the catalogs that I have and find these wines and see uh, what you could get them for retail where I work. So this is very dusty. Um, get a little bit of like currants hedging towards the raisin side. Definitely a little bit of red plum coming through. And getting an interesting crushed red brick component. And a little bit of licorice. So let's see what we get on the palate. Now the real difference between New World and Old World at Bordeaux and the Bordeaux, these tend to have more fruit to them. So a lot of people enjoy those more. Um, I would say like two out of 10 of my customers that come in really dig Old World wines, you know, that dirt, leather, all that. This has a really smooth tannins. I get a lot of spice. I like the spiciness on this wine. Getting a little chocolate component on the mid palate. It's um, it's like currants mixed with red berries with a little plum, you know, ripe plum flesh coming through, which I like a lot. This has a lot of guts to it. The tannins are smooth, but they have a little bit of a serious edge to them. They uh, have a little bit of attitude, as I like to say. Nice finish, a little bit of leather sneaks in there. It's a little dusty component. There's a little bit of minerality. Very interesting wine, I like it a lot. I, I think it's, um, it crosses over. I always say that that crossover wine, you can drink it by itself, which a lot of people still do, and you can enjoy it with food. It certainly has a guts for food. Um, this would be really good. This would be good with ham. It would be good with, um, well, obviously steaks and stews and things like that. There was just a dish I was thinking of that would be great with lasagna. I like that spiciness that comes through. Um, this might be good with duck, too. Yeah, 
Get a little bit of green tobacco that's probably from the Cab Franc on that. I like that wine, I really do. It has some serious, I would say, with this wine too, um, it's really drinkable right now. This is a drink right now wine. I think I said 2014, I better show you the label. It's like I've never done these before, right? Okay, so you should be able to see that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test this though. I'm gonna see if, if it just helps to do this. I might, I might have to keep doing that. I'm just afraid I'm gonna shut it off. I've done that a few times. I've shut off the camera by accident, hit the wrong button. I had to start all over again. I don't edit these. Um, I'm, I am working on an editing program because my, uh, my significant other, Susie, came in the back of one of them and she wanted to get that out of there. I could not do it. I, um, Windows Live Mail is very, it's an easy program to put your videos up, but not so easy to edit with. And I find that the, uh, the free ones like Windows Live Mail that came with my computer tend to be a little bit harder when it comes to editing and things like that. The, the program isn't that good. I'm going to go um, yabbering on here. I'm going to go B plus A minus on that one. I think it's really good for, and I'm sure you can get it for less than 25 bucks, but suggested retail 25 bucks. Well, here we go. 2014, the Trinity, Trinity by Trinity Hill, Hawks Bay, New Zealand. It's a red wine. This rolls in at $17. It is a blend of Merlot, Tempranillo, Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec, and Syrah. No percentages. Sorry about that. So how many of you know where Hawke's Bay is? Hawke's Bay is in the northern island of, us, of, of New Zealand. And it's on the east coast. It's a fairly big bay. A big wine region. They do a lot of great wines up in Hawke's Bay. We're mostly familiar with Marlboro, but Hawks Bay, some really great ones. I've had some really good Syrah out of uh, Hawks Bay. So this is a blend. Now this has a little bit of a twist. Now this is where the New World comes in. They put Tempranillo and Syrah in there. Now so, you know, when we say Bordeaux style blends, we're talking about the Cab, the Merlot, the Malbec. Those are obviously all in uh, Bordeaux. But then in the New World, you see they throw in a little Tempranillo and Syrah. So I'm curious how this one's going to flesh out. Let's see what we get on the nose. You know, initially when I smelled this, I thought, man, this one, this one's corked. But uh, actually it can't be. It's got a stealth enclosure. <laughs> So it's that menthol. I think that's what threw me off. There's a little bit of menthol coming through on this. So I get like a, a plum, blackberry, menthol thing going on. A little bit of chocolate coming through. With an underscore of licorice. I actually got a great compliment. I, my pick of the week for uh, on, on the Blue Collar Wine Guy. The link it will be down below on this video. Blue Collar Wine Guy was the Beeler uh, Cote de Rhone Village that I had in the blind tasting. And I made that my pick of the week. I think that was a great, exceptional wine for $13. Anyway, the sales rep saw it on the Blue Collar, sent it out. Charles Beeler, Charles Beeler responded, which is really cool, to Jen and said, my description of that wine was dead on. Now, he didn't have to say that. So that's a big compliment. I always like it when they agree with how I understand the wine to be. Okay, let's see what we get on the palate. Not sure what that, I get that like, it's not cork, it can't be cork, it doesn't have cork in it, it can't be cork, but there's that interesting, and, and it's not a negative, you know, for the producers of Trinity Hill, don't, don't take offense to that. There's just this interesting little kick on the back side of this wine. Could be the Tempranillo in this wine that does that, but 
my first reaction when this went into my mouth, this is an 80 percenter. This is 80 percent of the folks that I sell wine to would like this wine. It's very deep and rich, but it has good balance, has good acidity. There's really a lot going on in this wine. I get like this really potpourri of, of tobacco, currants, blackberries, uh, structured tannins. They're not polished by any stretch, but they're not aggressive. They're just structured. You can feel them in your mouth. And it, this stuff is just like, it has all this complexity going on in the mouth with a little bit of bark action coming through on the backside and some minerality, which is all very cool stuff. Very cool wine. And yet at the same time, it's able to have all that different things going on and stay in harmony, which I find very cool. I like that a lot in this wine. It's like a, it's like a taking a wild ride in your mouth, but it comes out okay, you know? After I'm done shooting this video, I'm having a little food with this. A little tannic grip on the back end. This one, more than the first one, needs some food. But you could drink it alone. Incredible complexity on this wine. A lot of stuff going on. 17 bucks. Are you kidding me? That's a great wine for 17 bucks. Um, love, love the stuff going on in my mouth right now. Love it. And I think it's that menthol action. It's just, it kind of lingers in there. It kind of hangs around with the acidity. Very interesting wine. Very good wine. Um, this could lay down for a bit. I would, I would definitely go five years with this. Great pizza wine. Great hamburger wine. Great ribs with barbecue. Great barbecue sauce wine. Red, for sure. I think the Faithful Ham would stand, stand up to that, too. But good stuff. I'm going to have to go A- minus on that straight up. Especially the quality price ratio is very high on this. I like it a lot. Good job, Trinity Hill A minus. Let's move on. I've had this before, just I can't remember what it was like. This is the Leviathan out of California, red 2013. And this is, uh, we have the Leviathan Wine Company. Um, okay, this rolls in at $48, and I have the blend here. This is a blend of Cab, Cab Franc, Merlot, and Syrah. There you go, no percentages. Give it a little rinse. So this rolls in at $48. A little bit higher priced. I think it's less than that. That's suggested retail price. With all these distributors and everything, a lot of times you get it for less than that. We're able to offer it to you for less. I think this close-up, I'm gonna have to use that. There you go, Leviathan. Pretty cool label. Let's see what we get on the nose. I'm trying to keep these under 20 minutes. Sometimes I get talking too much. I know that. Thanks for watching though. Um, I appreciate it a lot, you hanging with me on these. Uh, I hope you're learning something. I hope you're finding good wines. I hope I'm helping you spend your wine dollars wisely. That's my goal, really. Really is. And I like doing it. Let's see what we get on the nose. If you ever wanted to know what ripe currant is on the nose, this is the epitome of ripe currants. I get ripe currants, tobacco, and just an edge of bittersweet chocolate. Maybe just a tiny, tiny, tiny skosh, a skosh of wilted rose petals, if that means anything to you. Let's see what we get on the palate.
It's like biting into a bunch of dried ripe currants. But, but, it finishes with this acidic kind of hit, making it fresh on the end with a little tannic grip. The tannins are just drying my mouth up. I feel like it just got sand up in here. Interesting wine. Um, it's solidly ripe currants. I mean, solid with a little bit of tobacco. But that grippiness on the backside, long finish. Cool thing about the finish, I think, is you get like like a, a long like currants, but then there's tobacco that kind of creeps in there. I'm debating this wine. It's, it's the most expensive of the bunch. It definitely is smoother and bigger than any of the other ones. Um, I need a big freaking steak right now. I really do. I need a big steak. Excuse me. A little bit thin on the finish. Um, for the money, I mean, there's a lot of good things about it. I'm gonna have to go straight up B on this wine. Maybe hedging towards B minus. I think it's, it's better than average for sure. There's nothing too funky about it. it. It's just, I think for the money, I, I, a lot of you might wanna pass on it. I mean, I'd like it. Yeah, I'm, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to go B minus, I think it's more BB plus, I think it's a good bottle of wine, it has a lot of interesting things going on, it's big, it's powerful, it punches your palate, it has tannins, it could lay down, it has a long finish, a lot of tobacco coming in with the currants, yeah there's a lot of positives about the, the finish, it's just still going on and on, so I'm going to go BB plus, so there you go, some Bordeaux style blends, one straight up, all the five grapes of the Bordeaux, but definitely different in many ways than the old world Bordeaux that we maybe love or dislike. Some people don't like them, some people love them. My pick of the month for the month of February is a Bordeaux that I got at a great price on the floor. If you'd like to try any of these wines and you're in my area, just come see me, email me, uh, make a comment down here, I can get you a bottle if you'd like to try them. That's an, a new thing I'm adding to these videos because, hey, I can do it. If I can get my hands on these and you'd like to try one of these wines, I can get you a bottle. I can get you whatever you want to do. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at StanTheWineMan. Um, ask me questions there if you'd like. Make some comments about this video there if you'd like. Also, please read my blogs, StanTheWineMan.com. Now, don't let that confuse you. On the link, it says BeLucid.com. That was my original tag for that, but because my wine shop was called Brazenly Lucid Wines. So, StanTheWineMan.com or the Blue Collar wine, wine Guy on the Seattle PI. Make a comment, give me suggestions. I really want to move these things forward and improve them. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely. Hey, Dad, it's four o'clock in the morning. I just left the studio. Everybody's here but the police, and they'll be here anyway. It's high time, so catch this song. Here it is.